Hey guys, what is up? Schlappy here, playing some more Creativerse on the Project Singularity Creativerse server. And I'm over here in this empty, empty, empty biome. It's a frozen ocean. Great biome. Love it. But anyway, this is the perfect place for what I want to do today. Electricity just came out. I made a video on it. We talked a bit about the basics of what it is and played around with it. But there's so much more to learn and to know and that's what I want to do today is play around with everything and answer some questions that I've been curious about. So this is all the electricity stuff you can make along with the glove that I'm wearing. Um, these aren't really electricity things, these are just things you can control with electricity. But we've got the delay gate, the flip-flop gate, the number comparison gate, the logic gate, the LEDs, the inverter gate, the number pad, the pressure plate, and the switch. That's a lot to think about, and I have no idea how some of these work, so that's what we're going to try and play with today. But first, I have some questions, sort of basic questions, that I really just want to answer. So let's just dive right into that. Alright guys, we're going to start with the very basics of electricity, just to catch everyone up on the same page. Uh, so there's a send signal from send sources, so let's say we want this uh, switch to open that door. Click send on this, click receive on this. You can actually check uh, the settings of various devices by looking at them and pressing N. So here's uh, all that information. And if we go over to the door, uh, you can see it gets the receive signal from that input. There's also a can interact button. And if you hit this, um, if we switch back so we're out of the connection screen, we actually can't interact with this on its own. We have to flip the switch then that opens the door. So the can interact button is pretty handy if you want doors, you know, to not be able to open unless you give it a signal. I just did a few other connections real fast. So this beacon I have locked so that you have to stand on the delay gate. Uh, the, sorry, the pressure plate. And pressure plates, actually, you can have a built-in delay in them. So it has a reset delay. So this actually, when you step on it and step off, it'll hold it for five seconds, which can be pretty handy if you're using pressure plates for doors, even if like a three second delay. Because if you have no delay or a one second delay, sometimes it's really hard to get through the door. So having that delay can be pretty handy. And this last one is a pretty simple switch with the LEDs. But what I wanted to show is that I don't actually have these locked. Uh, so you can interact with them. So you can actually turn on LED lights uh, by clicking on them as well as switches and whatnot. So that's the very basics. That's how you wire things. You could check their little um, descriptions, not descriptions. You could check their properties. What is it called? You can check their device settings, I guess. I think I just said four synonyms. But anyway, you could check their device settings. So let's move into some more. Well, I guess this wasn't a test. Let's move into testing some stuff that I'm curious about. All right, guys, sorry for it being nighttime, but something um, kind of neat that you can do, I guess. <laughs> I just learned about this. I was playing around with stuff. Uh, if you press N and you copy um, Control C, this send, uh, you can actually just copy and paste it into things so you don't have to keep clicking. So if I go here, I can just paste it. And oh. so you can do that all the way down. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to test to see how far the signal will go. So there's four blocks. So these are at every fifth. So it goes all the way up to 40 blocks away. And if that works, then I'll take the first two and put them on the end. Because I'm curious if there's a maximum distance this can actually travel. All right. I went and slept. And let's try this. Uh, yeah, so far it works. So it works up to 40 blocks. Let's go further. All right, guys, so um, the closest one to us is at 50, and the furthest one is at 125, which is almost out of view distance. So 50, um, 70, 80, the red one here is 100, 105. So it goes at least to 125 blocks. I guess we have to try further. Let's see what happens here. Um... The red one's turned on. So the red is at 50. And then the next red is at 100. And then all the way down there should be a yellow. The yellow is 200. After this becomes 25. So that's 125, 150, 175. So 200 is lit up. Which means this thing can go at least 200 blocks. And I think that's where I'm going to end it because it's really annoying to count this out. So basically, it can go a really far distance. Is it unlimited? I don't know, but yeah. So this is at 200 blocks. 
do with that information what you will. If you have things connected over 200 blocks, you crazy. Because, I mean, look at this map. I discovered a new area coming over here. It's the lever is back here. Which is crazy. Alright, now for the height test, there's three LEDs. There's one at 10, 25, 50. I didn't go any higher than that. And they all turn on. The blue one up there is on top of a piece of snow because I ran out of stone. But they all turn on, so it travels at least 50 high. At least 200 long. I'm guessing it goes on quite a bit further than those measurements. But I just can't be bothered to do that. Well, no, it just... It would be annoying to do. Anywho, so that's pretty neat. Anyway, next test now. All right, next test. Can this thing go through walls? So right now I have this two high, ten long wall, and the power is supposed to go right through it. And it does. So let's make this wall a little thicker. I don't know if this will have any effect, so yeah. All right, 25 foot thick. Oh, oh, you know what? It might not be connected. <laughs> it might not be connected because I forgot to do that. That would have been exciting. Oh, no, it's receiving. So can it not go through this? No, okay, it can. It wasn't connected. That's too bad. That was almost a breakthrough. Um, you know, I actually haven't read anything about this electricity, really. I haven't really been following. I've got a few comments saying different things, but I actually haven't seen or read anything about it. So these tests are all just kind of me screwing around. But now we're going to try getting into a little bit more of the advanced stuff. Alright, so now we're going to check out the delay gates really fast. I actually already did this in uh, my last episode. I used them to create this warehouse light effect. There's a few things to note with them. So I'm just going to use LEDs here. You can actually use any light source uh, other than... I don't think torches work. No, okay. So torches you can't. But any of the other lights, you know, the um, wooden lanterns or whatever can turn on and off with the electricity stuff. But the important thing to note about using the delay gates is you actually... The signal from here has to go to the delay gate. Because the delay gate can receive a signal and then send a signal, but these lights can only receive a signal. So you actually have to hook the delay gates to each other. So this sends both to this light and to the next delay gate if you want to do kind of a on-off effect. And then the sends from these delays can be hooked up to as many lights as you want. So right now we're just doing a very basic... These lights, we want them to turn on sort of one after each other. So we hook the switch to the first delay, the first delay to a light, and to the next delay, which goes to the next light, and to the next delay, and whatnot. And then to program the delay times, we just press N and add, uh, let's just go 2.5 seconds. And let's go you know, 2.5 seconds, and let's go 2.5 seconds. The delays can go all the way up to 10. So this is um, a way to make your light sort of turn on in a row. So two and a half seconds is a little bit of time to wait, but you can see they turn on sort of in a row. Obviously, you can make that faster, longer, whatever you want. You can make it, you know, open one door, then the next door, and then whatnot. You could do some cool mini games with that. Um, you know, use timings, kind of parkour, you know, a door open and close and whatnot. And if I'm not mistaken, we could probably loop these around in a circle. No, we can't loop it in a circle unless we use probably something else just because this switch, you know, controls everything. <laughs> so anywho, uh, these will turn off. So that's delay gates. They're pretty easy. The only thing that to remember is that if you're going to hook the switch directly to a light, you also need to hook whatever your power source is. It doesn't have to be a switch. You have to hook it to the delay um, directly because lights and doors and stuff can't send signals. They can only receive signals. So delay gates, very simple, very easy to use. So I put a fire pit over here. Um, I'm hoping it'll keep me from getting too cold. Yeah, it seems to work if I stand on it, but you can actually turn on and off the fireplaces as well. Also, why does it make four of them? Like it makes four fire pits when I craft it, which seems crazy. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. We're gonna try using the flip flop gate. All right, first test. So I have both of these inputting into this, um, as you can see. I have both of the... No, I thought I had both of the... They both look like they're inputting to it. I'm not entirely sure what it does. That's why I'm testing it. Um, let's see what it says. Um, every positive input 
out event, the output is... On every positive input event, the output is toggled between true and false. So, I guess if I flip this, that's true. And then I need to flip it again to turn it off. So if I flip this, it's on. If I flip this, should it turn off? Yes. So basically, um, normally if I turn this off, the beacon would turn off, but I need to actually toggle it twice. Or I can use a second lever. So it's not... I don't really know what a use for this would be. I know there are a ton of uses for flip-flop gates. Um, I guess if this was one side of the door, you turn it on to open it. When you go inside, you could close it. You know what? Let's try setting that up real fast. Alright guys, so I was going to use pressure plates to show you, but they seem to be a little bit buggy. I don't really understand how the pressure plates work. They just don't seem to quite work, so I'll just show you guys sort of what I was thinking with switches. So basically, the flip-flop gate, with every positive input, it turns on and off whatever it's connected to. So right now, it's the door. So these switches are pretty easy to see positive and negative, because when they're negative, they're like this darker form. And when they're positive, they light up. So this is the positive. So positive value, it opens. And right now, if we switch this, that switches it to a negative value, so that won't do anything. But when we switch it back to the positive, this will close again. So, positive, it'll open, positive, it'll close. So you could do something like this with this. I think the pressure plates would work really well, because when you walk over it, it sends a signal. So if we sent the signal, the door would open. When you hit it on the other side, it sends another signal, the door closes. But they just seem to be a little bit buggy, so, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, that is the flip-flop gate. Pretty easy to understand, so let's check out another one of these. All right, guys, this next um, sort of... Thing in the electricity is very easy to understand. It's an inverter gate. So uh, if we go over, press N, it's an inverter gate. If you look at the little question mark, it says inverts blocks. Invert blocks receive a true false event and output an inverted Boolean value, um, which basically just means whatever signal you give it, uh, the block that the inverter outputs to receives the opposite. So right now I have this switch hooked up to these two lights. One of the signals is going through this inverter, which by the way has a really cool animation. Um, so basically, um, right now it's at false. And now that it's lit up, that one isn't going through the inverter gate, the other one is inverted. So basically it just changes whatever signal. So right now this is at a negative signal because the switch isn't lit up which means normally a light connected to a negative signal would be off, but when we switch it to positive, it just inverts the signal for whatever it's connected to. So that's the inverter gate. I guess you could do some pretty cool things like with bouncing lights and whatnot. You know, you could kind of get like a cool effect going. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of other uses for it. I'm sure I'll eventually play with those uses, but for now, that's what the inverter gate does. So I kind of racked my brain to think about ways you could use the verter gate, and I was kind of thinking, almost like a mini game, you could do something like this, um, where you always you could open one of the doors but not both, and you could probably do some sort of mini game with this mechanic, uh, with inverted whatnot, maybe some sort of game where you have to cross something or get through somehow and you have a series of switches or maybe something where you have doors like this and it's sort of a maze and you have glass on top and you have one person on top who can flip switches but every flip uh, switches doors like this so imagine like you had tons of doors and it was kind of a maze and half the doors were open half were closed depending what way you switched and you tried to guide your partner through the little maze I think that'd be kind of cool I'm probably gonna make that at some point in the near future because that sounds pretty neat all right, next up, we're going to check out the logic gate. So let's go over here and just set up. Uh, so this is the logic gate. It's actually pretty easy to use, but can look pretty complicated. So it needs two inputs. So we're just going to put uh, two switches for now, and then maybe we'll try a different input after. We're just going to try two switches, and we're going to have an output to, um, well, let's just give it an LED. And let's change the LED color to something. Uh, let's change it to pink. Sure. So we're going to uh, use a send signal from this thing. It's got two different inputs. So basically what this device does is it takes two different inputs and outputs it um, and gives an output signal. So right now, two switches and they go to an LED. If you press N on this, you have a few different options, as you guys can probably see. And basically it takes two inputs, reads them, and then whatever description you give it, it will be the output. So right now it's an AND gate, which means that if both of these are on or true, then the light will be on. So if we turn on one, so that's a true signal, that's a true signal, and it outputs true. Anyway, all right, let's turn these both off. 
and so next up is the or so the or gate is pretty easy to understand sorry i keep pressing the wrong button <laughs> The OR gate's pretty easy to understand. The AND gate, both of them need to be on for the light to be on. In the OR gate, either of them can be on um, and it'll turn on. Pretty simple. So either one of them being on means that it can turn on. If we go to the next one, the XOR. The XOR is pretty similar except instead of um, both of them needing to be on or one of them, basically <laughs> either one of them can turn it on, but they can't both be on at the same time. So one of these has to be on, but they can't both be on at the same time. If we uh, just reset it back to zero. Uh, so let's go N on this again. The AN AND gate, it outputs false if input one and input two are true. So it's basically like the AND gate, except both of them need to be off. So if both of them are on, then this outputs false, which means it's off. So if both of these are anywhere other than false, then they're on, or sorry. So basically, if both of these are powered, if both of these are true, if both of them are on, then it's off. In any other state, it's um, on. Sorry, the explanations get rattled up in my brain. There's the N or gate. So it outputs true if input one or input true are both false. So you guys can probably guess what it does. Right now, they're both uh, off or false, and it's on. So... Yeah, it basically sets it so that both of these need to be false for this to turn on. And the last gate here, the XNOR, it outputs true if both input 1 and input 2 are of the same value. So basically all that means, geez louise, I'm going to press that button so many times. Um, basically what it means is these two levers have to be in the same position. So they either both have to be on or they both have to be off. They can't be in separate positions. And if they're both in the same position, then it'll read true and it'll output the signal and turn on the light. So that's the logic gate. It's very easy to understand. Um, they were very kind when they give you a very accurate description of what each of these does. So that's pretty neat. That's the logic gate. All right, maybe um, I've been sort of trying to show what every one of these can do sort of in my mind, um, what you can use them for. So I thought, why not try and do that with the logic gates as well? So I actually kind of thought of a little game. You could make a little map. Well, I'm just thinking out loud here, but you can make a little map and have it so that you have to hit um, a certain number of, you know, you have to switch a bunch of levers inside of a map. You can put some obstacles, some monsters, whatever. You can have um, logic gates hooked up to each other. So basically these two things feed into this logic gate, which feeds into one of the input signals on that one. So basically where the way this works is all four of these levers have to be powered on to turn on the beacon. And if any of them are off, then the beacon's not on. So you could do some pretty cool stuff. I mean, you could even hook up that so you need to turn on the four levers to open a door. You know, that could be anything. I just made it a beacon. But you could have it so you know you need to hit four levers to open a door to get to the next area. Kind of a hide and seek maybe could be kind of cool. But yeah, I thought I'd uh, share that with you guys. You know, I'm trying to show that you know, some uses for them, even though I'm just playing around with them. But this is kind of cool. And you could even hook this up so, you know, um, you need to you know that logic gate could go into one side of another logic gate you know you could hook them up sort of infinite in in infinitely in infinitely i don't know what word i'm looking for but you know you could have it so that you have to hit 16 levers or 32 levers or whatever um but i just thought i'd show that kind of neat i guess i never actually showed the connections um but basically it, it, it's just what i described so this uh the two receiving signals from this come from the outputs of those so basically, all of the signals need to be true kind of in the tree leading up to that for it to work. All right, so the sort of last um, unit we can look at is the number comparison gate, uh, which is similar to the logic gate, except it uses numeric values to calculate it. So basically, um, here it is. You have two inputs. So right now we're using two number pads. And you can have a bunch of things. So equal comparison. So it outputs true if the two inputs are equal. Um, we have outputs true if one put on is not equal, uh, the less than comparison, the less than or equal comparison, the greater than comparison, and the greater than or equal to comparison. So all the mathematics um, that you can pretty much do. So if we change these, these are both registered to one right now. If we change one to two, it outputs false. So if we enter two on this side, it'll output true. So you can kind of do something, I mean, I'm sure you guys can imagine, you can do some pretty neat stuff with this in terms of the 
you know, um, number pads. Also, just for reference, you can put number pads on the side. You don't have to put them like weird like I did. Might as well just change that real fast. Um, are those still attached? No. So right now, if we change this to, let's say that's five, that should turn off. So they keep a memory. Um, they keep a memory a little bit. So basically, you can compare numbers, so we can do something if we make it so that it has to be uh, not equal. So right now, they're equal in comparison, right? They're both set to 5, so maybe we change this one to 8, then it'll work. But if we change this one to 8, then it won't work. I'm sure you guys kind of get the idea of what it is. Um, and then, obviously, you have your greater than, your less than, and equal, your less than. Those are pretty basic. I'm not going to go through those. What I am curious about, though, is if this will work with something that's not a number pad, or if this is strictly a number pad comparison. So let's put these switches up and see if we can connect them. I'm guessing, theoretically, it would work like a logic gate. So if these have a number value, let's say true is 0, false is 1. Yeah, so it does work exactly like a logic gate. So right now it's set to not equal. So obviously these are not equal at the moment. Now they're equal, they don't work. So it works the same way as a logic gate, I suppose, where you can kind of do all of that. So if I set these to equal... Now it works. All right, so that's pretty cool. That's the number comparison gate. Um, I guess you could do some probably some pretty cool stuff if you wanted to. Let me just set up something real fast. All right, so I've set up something, um, I guess, kind of neat. <laughs> um, it was kind of, you know, a quick summary. But basically, the only way this door will open is if I type in, uh, I guess I set it to one, I believe. So yeah. And then when I go through here, um, the only way this door will open is if I type something other than one, <laughs> which means that one closes. So it's kind of a security measure, I suppose, kind of a vault type thing you could do with this. And basically the way I'm doing that is um, both of these number pads are outputting to both of these devices. One of the devices is set to equal to. So this front door, when these two are equal, the front door is open. And then when these two are not equal, this back door opens. So basically whatever you change this back one to, yeah, it's not exactly a perfect system, but it's kind of neat. And I actually want to try now hooking up a few different number pads sort of together. The other thing you can do is if you want to just create a door that you need to do the number pad with, you could do something uh, very easily, you know, something like this and have a number pad on either side of the door. And then uh, if we just take this and put it here. Um, so if we just let's put the send to this this end to this and this end to the door here and then if we want to make it uh yeah i suppose we can make it equal to right so uh did i set it to two so you can do that and then when you go in you can change it um that's just an easy way to make a little you know door if you want to that you can open and close with the number pad it stores memory so you could always do the same thing you also don't even need to put this on the back if you want to have some other way out but that's an easy way to do the number pad door system um, you can even set them to be like ridiculous numbers if you want to have you know the ultimate of security so there you go that's uh the number pad Anyway, guys, that's about it for me today. Um, I learned a lot. I now know pretty much what everything here does and how to use it. And I have some pretty cool ideas for how to use it, um, you know, in my own kind of creative verse uh, things. You can do some cool mini games. I suspect there'll be some pretty neat stuff like that. I have a ton of ideas for mini games now and stuff to build. I hope this helps somehow. It wasn't exactly the best tutorial or anything i was more just experimenting and trying to figure out what everything does and how everything works and i hope um in my experimenting you guys um, picked up some stuff if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'll do my best to answer them i'll probably be doing more with this in the future um few episodes so subscribe for that and you can catch all of those uh, but if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'll do my best to answer 
And uh, if there's anything you guys want me to test out, I would love to come back here and just start testing stuff. I'll probably be doing that anyway, but leave some suggestions for things to try and build or things to test. Uh, also, there's a ton of people in the comments who have helped me a lot with a lot of the creative stuff. So if I can't answer it, one of them probably can. But anyway, yeah, leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Comment um, anything you want me to test or any questions you have. And subscribe for a bunch more Creativerse because I don't see myself quitting anytime soon. And uh, yeah, ciao.